Hi, in this video we're going to look at creative sound design and SFX in Serum. So I've got a couple of patches I've made, so we'll start off with this riser. It sounds quite different depending on where you play it on the keyboard. So let's go through how it was made up. So I'm going to start off by taking off the effects and the filter and we'll start off with just the oscillators. So I'm using this Reese Mass 3 wavetable which comes with Serum. And we've got a couple of things happening here. So first we've got this envelope 2 here which is controlling the levels of both the oscillators so that the level rises over time. And then we've got this LFO here which is controlling the wavetable position so it runs through the wavetable. And then we've got an LFO here which is controlling the unison detune, which makes quite a bit of difference if I bypass this. And then we put it back on. It creates quite an interesting effect. There's also ring modulation from the first oscillator to the second oscillator, which is again being controlled by an envelope. This LF33 is an envelope mode, so it just rises and falls back down. And there's an envelope here, again LF04, but it's an envelope mode, and this is controlling the pitch, which you can see here, but also in the modulation matrix. We've got here controlling the fine and here it's controlling the master tune as well. So that creates a bit of excitement. And that's pretty much it. And layered above that we've got this Atmos 14 and the noise section, I've got this envelope here, this envelope three, which is controlling the pitch and level just so it rises over time. And that is going to this formant two filter. There's no modulation on the filter. It's just using the formant two, having the resonance cranked up, brings out some nice harmonics. It's quite a weird effect. Oscillator one and two aren't going to the filter. They're just going straight to the effects section. So the noise and the oscillators together sound like this. And then when you start adding some effects, so I've got the hyper dimension, which adds some thickness to, I've got the unison set to four, and a little bit of dimension, just add some stereo width, makes it sound a bit thicker. And then some distortion. And then a delay and reverb. I've got this envelope here controlling the mix level of both the reverb and delay so that the delay and reverb picks up as the patch gets louder and then decays with it. So that gives it the impression that the, the, the sound is getting bigger over time. And then to emphasize that more, I've got a compressor. By having the compressor after the delay and reverb, that sort of blows up the tail quite a lot. So you can hear it really exaggerates the tail. So it's quite a simple way you can get quite a cool patch that's got lots of excitement to it just by modulating the pitch and delay and reverb and things like that. It's just lots of subtle things and when you combine them you get some interesting movements. And I've made a variation of this patch just by changing over the wavetables. I just changed this to Monster 4. Uh, 
and you can just play around and get different sounds really quickly. And I've got another variation here, which is quite different. Okay, so let's start by removing the effects. So in this case, both the oscillators are going to the filter, but I'll bypass that for the moment. So again, we've got an LFO here, which is controlling the pitch. So it gives it this sort of weird vibrato type effect. And then we've got the second LFO, which is controlling the wavetable position of the second oscillator. And then we've got a third LFO, which is controlling the detune amount of the unison again. And there's some frequency modulation from the first oscillator. Which introduces some higher harmonics. But that's quite simple. It sounds quite weird on its own. But then with the filter, I've got this phaser 12 plus. And there's this envelope three here controlling the cutoff. And the resonance cranked up all the way just to emphasize the shape of the filter, a little bit of drive. And we've got some sub and noise in here as well. So all these layers combined. Then with the filter. It sounds quite horrible, but then again, gone with the hyper dimension, unison sector three, bit of detune, bit of dimension to add some thickness and some stereo width. And then there's this LFO filter here which makes quite a bit of difference. So with this LFO3 which is controlling the detune and the cutoff there's this little trick I've done so where the rate parameter is that's being controlled by this envelope so as the sound progresses, the speed of the LFO increases, which you can hear. Which creates quite a lot of excitement. And then we've got a reverb as well, which is being controlled again by this envelope here, just so that the, the reverb opens out and it makes the sound sound as though it's getting larger over time. So that's just some quick and easy ways you can do some cool sound design with, with Serum and create some good rises and downshifters and those kind of things to help transitions in your tracks. So now we're going to have a look at drones and atmospheres in Serum. I've got this drone sound I've made, which is quite sort of syncopated over some percussion that you could use for an intro or something like that. So let's have a listen to it and then look how it was made up.
So I'll just take off the effects for the moment and in Serum we'll go through how the patch was made from the ground up. So I'll start off with Oscillator A, which has got this dirt saw wave table in and there's an LFO here which is controlling the fine tune, so that gives it like a vibrato type effect. And the unison set to 6 with a bit of detune. So without the unison and the vibrato, it's quite static. That just gives it like a little bit of that unstableness to it. And there isn't anything else happening. There's nothing modulating the wavetable position or anything like that. Then with these oscillator B, I've got this add thirds wavetable. And again, this LFO here is controlling the fine tune and there is an LFO here which can just cycling through the wavetable position and there's also some amplitude modulation from oscillator A and it's detuned in quite a weird way as well because this is down four semitones and two octaves and this one's down two octaves, so there's like a four semitone difference, which gives it this weird chord type effect. And that's just going to a low pass filter. Again, there's not any modulation on here, it's just taken out some of the very high end, and there's a little bit of drive. See, on its own, it doesn't sound that pleasant. And then there's some noise, which is this Atmos 45. Which I've just got a macro set up to control the level of that, but there isn't any other, any other modulation. And the noise is also going to the filter with oscillator A and B. And without the filter. And I've enabled the pitch tracking here with this little icon of a piano and the little button by it so that you can play it up and down the keyboard with that disabled. It just plays the whatever pitch the sample is at by default. And then with the filter. So at this stage it really doesn't sound like much, but then when we add the hyper dimension, unison set to five, the mix amount and the dimension is quite high. This adds some stereo width and thickness to the patch. And then reverb, I've just got a macro down here controlling the mix amount. And there isn't, in this case, I haven't used envelopes or LFOs because I always want this sound to be continuous. So the reverb makes a huge difference. And then I've got another filter, but I'm just using this for the driver and it's not really cutting out any frequencies. It's set really high, so it's pretty much inaudible high frequencies that are being cut out. If we just have a play with the reverb. It really brings the sound to life. And then next I've got FabFilter Pro-Q2. Uh, it's just doing a steep cut at 349 hertz just to take out all the low ends. Uh, next I've got 
LFO tool, which I'm just using this sidechain 5 preset, and this gives it that syncopated uh, effect. This is just controlling the amplitude of the patch. So. So I've this with some percussion or drums. And then with the LFO tool. The LFO tool makes it sound a lot more exciting and gives it that energy that it otherwise doesn't have. And again, just going back to how it sounds without the effects. Yeah, it makes a huge deal of difference, but that's just yeah, a cool way you can mix some nice atmospheres and textures really easily. <laughs> 